So what was in the what was in what was in that kind of bridge between coming out of, of those twenty five years and the moment in which eternal media starts to happen uh, a, a, and offer you a really something that you really wanted to do in a very different way and maybe even as we've said you do a little bit obsessively from time to time now but it, it's a much healthier obsession if it is one yes so was 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 there a sort of bridge were you doing much of anything in between did you do any other type of bit of work or volunteering or community work or was it just i mean what happened in you know to get from a to b in that sense yeah well it did start pretty much when I, you know, after you, after I managed to survive one of your walks in winter when I was cold turkeying and you get me blown off the side of snow. And... We took a few people cold turkeying up mountains, you know. <laughs> They're all alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not been a, it was scary. Anyway, the um, it was around that time. I d um, so yeah, I went to T12 in the Bay, I took show 12s as it was back in the day, and there was some kind of programme there when I went. Um, although, I, I, you know, I, I did a few months and got kicked out, not for using, just having a difference of opinion and not getting on with, um, yeah, just not getting on with somebody who was, um, I don't know, just weird politics at the time. And then my cycle is about three years. It certainly was then. That was my first go at getting clean when, when I'd met you. Um, yeah. um, I think I lasted three months and then I was out in the wilderness for another three years and then went back to um, homeless and all that horribleness and then went back, got back in T12 three years later. I remember the first time, they thought I didn't look in my In my memory somewhere, I came across you with a saxophone on a high street somewhere in that space. Yeah, I used to. Um, well, Adrian from the Bay, Ada Blade, the barber, my <laughs> friend, he, um, when I came out of prison again, he bought me a saxophone so uh, to try and keep me out of crime so I could just busk it. And I had played saxophone before, you know, I played it as a kid and trombone and things like that. And, you know, I could get a tune out of it. And, and yeah, I did busk a lot up and down North Wales and, you know, I did really well in the clan, did now. You know, all the old stuff, the swing, the blues, the, um, you know, um, Louis Armstrong, all that stuff. The old folk loved it and they, they it was only about 70 pounds an hour at one point, did okay. Um, but it all about heroin, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that was a little bit later. Um, it was the second time I went back to T12. There wasn't a programme by this point, so you had to scratch for something to do. And I was encouraged um, by Amanda, who was brilliant. Um, she encouraged me, because I didn't know what, I never had a hobby. Heroin was my everything. It was my reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mistress, all these cliches. That was me. That was my love affair. That was my great love affair. Um, it was all I ever needed. So I didn't know what I liked doing. I, you know, I, um, so she encouraged me to try different groups. I worked on the railway line, I worked up in the forest. So I, I tried different things. And then the project came to T12. He wanted to create a little music group. And Steve, um, yeah, Steve came down and Chris came down from Tape. Steve Twindon from Tape. Yeah, yeah I think it, it wasn't Tape then. It was, um, it was something else, I think, at the time. Or, or it just become Tape. Um, it may have been. It might have been. But they came down, they, you know, and, and I asked, oh, have you got a saxophone? And they said, no, I've got a triangle. Oh, no. So um, I left it, but they got in touch with me the, a week later and asked me if I wanted to be part of a creative writing course, which I loved writing. I loved, I loved English at school. It was one of the few things I actually got on with. And um, I thought, yeah, OK. So, um, you know, Sharon Gibbon was there and she became a good friend and John Owen and other people. You know, it, it was a, an extension of my support network at the time, really. And these people are still my friends. So something worked for me back then. Um, and, you know, we were meeting every week and, you know, th having thoughts about writing, putting plays on. I noticed week after week, nobody was writing anything else. So these ideas were coming in and just going out into the ether straight away. So I picked up a pad one day, just started jotting everybody's thoughts down and had a week later and I'd written a play. I hadn't written one before, but I'd done it as I thought it should look, you know, scripted and all the rest of it. And apparently it was quite accurate as how it's done. And the group picked it up and... I ended up directing a play that ended up touring 
and um, I got a job with tape. So my first paid gig was a playwright. 